Britain's most exciting new champion tops the bill on fight night tonight. Pat Barrett defends the British light welterweight title he won in spectacular fashion in May. Well, that was a good shot underneath again from Barrett. That's a good puncher in that uppercut downstairs. And that's a good left from Barrett. And where is he gone? He won't get up from that. And Barrett is finishing in sensational style. Welcome to the Wolverhampton Civic Hall, where Black Flash Barrett makes the first defense of his crown against the Scottish champion, Robert Harkin. Barrett was the surprise winner of the British title, but the fight night audience had certainly seen his explosive potential before that. He couldn't have been more impressive when he stopped Mark Del Boss of Belgium at Glasgow in March. And he tagged him, and he's been hit around the body, and the towel's in at the same time. In May, Barrett came in as a late replacement, and he took Willis's title in the ninth round. Since then, three American imports have fallen to Barrett's power. On fight night in June, he demolished Roberto Trevino in two rounds. Oh, what a left hook, right above the commentary position here. And that was the same way that he nailed Tony Willis, a far more experienced opponent. Barrett's sights are set high, and he doesn't pull punches when he talks of his ambitions. I don't want to be known as a superstar, but a legend, you know? Well, now Barrett is back in championship action, but there have been problems in the build-up to this fight. Barrett had to shed nearly a pound at today's weigh-in, and he's been plagued by obscene phone calls from people claiming to be Harkin supporters. You expect things like that once you get in such a level, don't you? You know, you expect, you know, phone calls, people coming up and saying things. You expect it all, don't you? It's all about, you know, being at the top. We completely disassociate ourselves uh, from this type of action. And the Harkins family is a very good, clean, loving family, upstanding in the community. And uh, I'm quite sure that somebody's scandal mongering. It remains to be seen whether all that upsets the champion in the ring. Barrett comes here with a record of 21 wins in 23 fights, 16 of them inside the distance. Robert Harkin challenged unsuccessfully for the Commonwealth title in Australia a year ago. His record? 13 wins, including nine knockouts in 18 fights. So it's the British Light Welterweight Championship then. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. It's sponsored by Telstar Video Entertainment. Let's join our commentary team of Jim Watt and Hugh Johns. But first of all, let's hear from our Master of Ceremonies, Vince Miller. Gentlemen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing at three minutes each round for the British Light Welterweight Championship. Presenting in the blue corner, the challenger and Scottish champion from Helensburgh, Scotland, Robert Harkin. And in the red corner, the champion from Manchester, Pat Blackflash Barrett. And the way in at one o'clock, both boxes scale nine stone, 13 and a half pound. Your officials appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control are as follows. Your Chief Steward in Charge, Mr. Charles Giles. Your Medical Officer, Dr. Bagrutti. Your Timekeeper, Mr. Jack Gibbon. And your referee for this contest from Wolverhampton, Mr. John Coyle. This is the main event of the evening. Thank you. And referee John Coyle calls the two boxes together. The champion. He came in wearing his Lonsdale belt and snarling that if you want to take that away from me, you've really got to batter me into the ground. The Black Flash, Pat Barrett, the challenger, the Scottish champion, Robert Harvey. Twelve rounds of boxing scheduled, but I wonder if it can possibly go that far. Both these men have a KO punch. And it's a question of who gets on top first. Harkin, the black shorts, the white boots, and the British champion. Long Bermuda black shorts and a colorful gold trim to it. Gold, the winning colour. I wonder if it will be again for him tonight. Barrett trying to tempt Harkin to come in and have a go at him. 
questionable. Uh, Harkin is a good solid professional, but uh, he can't match Barrett for speed or uh, our natural talent. So he's going to have to think a nice tight defence. He's going to have to back Barrett up uh, if possible. If he allows Barrett to come forward and let these uh, combinations go, then Harkin's obviously going to be in trouble. So he started off, although it's very early here in the first round, Harkin has started off uh, in the right manner. He's uh, moving very carefully, but uh, trying to, to back the champion up and just let single punches go at this stage. Uh, he doesn't really want to start opening up because then I think uh, Barrett's speed would have him in some trouble. Barrett light on his feet. Lighter than he was just before the way in this morning when he found to his surprise that he was over the 10 stone limit and had to sweat off a, a pound fairly quickly. Actually took off a pound and a half. That was a good, good right hand from Hawking. I wonder, in fact, uh, Jim, whether taking taking weight off just before a weigh-in will have affected uh, Barrett in any way. Well, uh, it shouldn't affect him uh, physically because I don't think he has weight problems. I think it's just a, a slight error they've made uh, uh, the, the day before the, the contest. But it just depends, does it affect, affect him psychologically? Is he worried about it 12 rounds? Uh, it just depends, but I don't think... Uh, I think there's enough sense to know it's just a little mistake he's made and it won't have any bearing on the outcome. Obviously needs a new pair of uh, bathroom scales. <laughs> Harkin finally caught up with him. And this is Barrett. actually a very good start from Harkin. He's boxed very carefully indeed, hasn't made a mistake. Although Barrett hasn't started yet, it was a good round for Harkin. The black flash in his corner with uh, his trainer. Ryan Hughes. Probably doesn't need too much in the way of advice at this stage. He'll have done, uh, he'll have done the business to his cornermen's uh, planning in that first round. No emotion showing in his eyes, and meanwhile, Robert Harkin having good advice from uh, his cornermen. Second round. Round two. McCrory helping to calm Harkin as he comes out for this second round. <laughs> Harkin made a mistake then and paid for it, got slapped with an uppercut. Harkin will be anxiously keeping his eye on that left hand of Pat Barrett. It's the one that has done so much damage in uh, a very short career, but a spectacular career that this uh, Manchester boxer has achieved. him with the left hand but it wasn't really with the knuckle part of the glove oh yes and that was a mistake by Barrett and he could have paid very dearly for it it was a glancing blow and he could really have taken a wallop then from Harkin's right hand that's as sharp a punch as I've seen Robert Harkin deliver in his whole career that was a lovely punch that wasn't an easy punch to land uh, he caused Barrett to miss and come over with a nice little chopping right hand. 
Harkin's tactics are very sound uh, this early in the contest. As I say, he's just dealing in single shots. He's not opening himself up. He's taking his chances. I think he's just trying to, to put Barrett in his place if possible, not allow him to gain his confidence. And it's working so far. This is where Harkin can be vulnerable. That's twice in this round he's thrown a punch and lost his way and being clobbered by Barrett's very speedy hands. in no way overawed in this contest in his challenge for the British title. <laughs> Another interesting round with uh, Harkin boxing to some sort of set plan and it seems to be working for him. Harkin, uh, a good tradesman, learned his uh, business very, very well indeed. See, this is, uh, we're seeing some flashes now of Barrett's speed. But uh, not success, uh, Harkin still uh, forcing him to miss. Second out, round three. Third round. And a lot of uh, Barrett's Manchester supporters here. Perhaps a little surprised that it's gone this far. They were all reckoning that Barrett would, would finish it early, but... Robert Harkin has certainly got other ideas about that. Of course, there'll be plenty of uh, fight fans up in Scotland taking an interest in Pat Barrett's uh, performance here. Done a lot of his boxing up in uh, Glasgow. Good left hand from Harkin again, found the target. It's just a little bit negative uh, so far in the, the contest. We usually expect to see him find the rhythm and uh, start to let the punches flow. Although Harkin uh, he ha has to be thanked uh, for not giving him too much room. Uh, I think we should we expect better. This is a bit better now. The, the, the fight uh, finally catching fire now. There was a little mouse and uh, Harkin's left eye. But you have to look back to the uh, night that Pat Barrett won the British title. He was behind on points against Tony Willis until he uh, caught up with him in the ninth. Yeah, it says beginning to catch fire a little bit now. Although Harkin is moving forward slowly, his punches are nice and sharp. He caught Barrett yet again with a nice little uh, sneak right hand. He's taken obviously some leather back in exchange. But uh, thankfully the fight itself is catching fire now. We're seeing a little bit of action. Barrett was the one who quickly wanted to grab and hold. A little flurry of punches back from Barrett, but he was... Uh, he was happy to grab hold of Hagen.
great difference in style here. Harkin, his feet firmly planted on the floor. Barrett up on his toes most of the time. Well, that's uh, a little mouse underneath Harkin's left eye. I don't think it's causing the corner any trouble. They're putting a little, little cooling on it. It's well below the eye. Tony McCrory in there. And that's uh, Dunky Jowett who's uh, applying the eye treatment. You see, uh, Harkin still giving the, the champion plenty of problems in here. Uh, champion couldn't wait to get a hold of Harkin just to stop the action there. Second round, round four. Fourth round then. Barrett is setting his feet a bit more in this round, uh, Hugh. You can see he's still backing off slightly, but he's setting his feet a bit more. This looks as though maybe he's been told to let some heavy punches go. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can see a difference now in uh, Barrett's attitude. Oh, yes. Barrett really stood in there and banged him out. Combinations left and right. And Harkin... Nervously bringing his gloves up to guard his face at this moment now. And Barrett walked into the right hand. Uh, this, this is where Harkin has to grit his teeth, uh, tuck up nice and tight, and just weather this little storm and then try to push the champion back again. Uh, Barrett is not known for setting a pace and maintaining that pace. He likes to fight in little spots. So uh, Harkin should be thinking just... Nice and tight here. Uh, once the champion comes in, then go back, try to push him back again. About a minute of this round left. And Barrett looking sharper in this round, I think, than in any of the previous rounds. You see, Barrett's weight now is on his front foot. Now he's looking for some power into these punches. Got a good dig in then. Swayed away from the left hand and hammered his own left in. The hook, oh yes, and again. That's the left hook that has been doing so much damage, particularly to the Americans that they've been bringing over to test him. Pat Barrett will feel very happy about indeed. Half of this uh, British title fight, Pat Barrett, who brought his Lonsdale belt into the ring and reckons he's going to take it home again tonight to his new home, the new house that he's bought in Manchester. But uh, so far, the Scottish champion, Robert Harkin, certainly looking as though uh, it might go way up north that belt it's 
She does that nice little sharp right hand lead from Harkin again, which you wouldn't expect to catch Barrett on a good night, but it's been catching him repeatedly tonight. Uh, at this moment in time, I actually have Harkin uh, two rounds in front, and I really feel the champion has it all to do. He hasn't found any rhythm. He's looked very good in little spots, but, but, but he's never sustained any pressure or, or any real uh, flow of punches. That was a little bit low. Harkin signalling that the left hand was a bit low. Barrett reaching out with the long left. And then the right over the top. Well, we're seeing a little bit more commitment I've, again from Barrett in this round. And then the glove is split completely, and that is going to be quite a holdout. They're putting a, another glove up into the ring, but uh, there'll be certainly a long holdup as that glove almost exploded. And it looked for a moment as though uh, Robert Harkin was uh, delivering the mail. So, a re-gloved Robert Harkin gets back into business with a minute and a half of this round left. Well, well I was just in the process of saying that uh, Barrett looked as though he uh, intended showing a little bit more commitment in this round, uh, and that uh, broke his rhythm, that split glove. So we'll see if he's going to pick up where he left off, but I really feel he needs to improve on what he's been doing already. Uh, it would have been a nice time for uh, Tommy Gilmore's corner men to have put a, a little bit of lead weight into the uh, new glove while they were putting it on. <laughs> An old horseshoe or something of that nature. With the uh, eagle eye of the officials around the ring. Make sure that there's nothing of that kind happening in the game. Ah, now then, Barrett suddenly sparks into action but Hardy took a lot of that on his forearms a uh, Harkin and then Harkin took a lot of that on his forearms well uh, that, that was a good burst from the champion but you don't win rounds by a uh, 10 second burst I'm afraid Harkin's certainly doing a lot better than uh, his last title fight. That was when he travelled to Melbourne a year ago to have a crack at the Commonwealth title. He was ahead on points after two rounds, but Lester Ellis warmed up in round four and had Harkin down for two counts of nine before the referee stopped it. But certainly, uh, Robert Harkin doing a lot better here tonight. Yeah, well, Harkin, is still, that, that's the, the low left hand there, followed by the left hook. That, that left hand certainly was low, and Harkin complained about it. Harkin might uh, very well have something of a special target on his mind here tonight. Not only the Scottish title, but the British title now in his sights. Having failed to land the Commonwealth crown. Stop boxing! Time out. And referee John Coyle is demanding a little bit more action. Well, uh, the referee is 100% correct in calling for more action, but I think little Robert Harkin will be sorry that's happened because the pace has suited him so much. He's been allowed to, to stop the champion and throwing single punches and the things have been going his way, but uh, if Barrett raises the pace now, as he should have done three or four rounds ago, 
then we should expect him to begin to take over. You always feel Barrett is capable of taking a hold of this fight, but he just doesn't seem to want to do it enough. Well, Barrett is uh, obviously boxing for some sort of pattern, but uh, it's a pattern that doesn't please referee John Coyle, and so far it doesn't seem to have done him a lot of good in the way of scrounging points from this contest. Well, if I'd been mapping out a plan for Harkin, I would have told him to stay nice and tight there. Just be careful of what he's taking in the first four or five, six rounds. Have plenty of strength left for the second half of the fight when they hopefully Barrett will have slowed down a little bit. But uh, we're well beyond the halfway stage and the Barrett has taken nothing out of Harkin whatsoever. So he must still have plenty of steam left. And I really feel Barrett's making this a far more difficult job than it should have been. And uh, his back is really to the wall now. Uh, once again, Barrett threw two, three, four little sharp punches, little combinations, but then grabs and holds. He's working a little bit harder now. But uh, Barrett must sustain the action. He's never been prepared to, to set a pace and maintain that pace. He must do a good left hook from Barrett. Yes, now he's opening up. Now the British champion is pouring it on. But Hardy's still there, and he turned his man, got him on the ropes, and Barrett's in some bother. Barrett seems to have punched himself out in that last little flurry, and it's Hardy doing the business right on the bell. And it's a flat-footed Barrett who goes back to his corner. I'm beginning to wonder whether that overweight this morning and the fact that he had to take off weight in fact shows that his Recent training and routines haven't been as good as they should have been. Well, uh, Barrett showed some real uh, championship stuff here. Wonderful punches, bang on target, but then the challenger showed exactly what he's made of. He turned them onto the ropes, and these are good punches from the champion, slipping them through the guard. But uh, Harkin, nice and tight, still thinking a bit about defence. Uh, just shortly here, he turned the champion and then come back with some lovely punches of his own and actually finished the round well on top. Second out, round nine. Ninth round. Ninth of 12 scheduled. Most of the crowd support here in Wolverhampton is for the British champion, Pat Barrett. But he's finding the first defence of the title that he took and it was vacant. And he beat Tony Willis back in May. A little bit more difficult than he thought. And I would have thought the co-promoters of this tournament, Brian Sharkey and Ron Gray will be rubbing their hands about having got this contest here for a packed house at Wolverhampton. It really is a fascinating fight and could provide quite an upset. Still a long way to go, though. The, the fact that Barrett needed two attempts to make the weight could, in a way, I suppose, explain the, the low-key tactics, but I don't think they do. I don't think that... He, do, he doesn't have the look of a man who has drained at the weight. He seems to have plenty of life about him, plenty of spring in his legs. He just seems to have lacked that little bit of commitment tonight. You know, he's like a man defending a title. He doesn't have the look of a challenger who really wants to go in and they get on with the job. He's never set a pace and been uh, prepared to try to sustain the pace. Well, I suppose uh, not before too long, both Pat Barrett and uh, Robert Harkin will have the chance to uh, settle down and view this fight in comfort in their own living room. And uh, Telstar complete their 
video of this British title fight. And that should make interesting watching, as it does at this moment for us ringside and you at home. I think the time has now come for Harkin to try to raise the pace. He's been getting away with this one pace uh, boxing, which has been working for him all the way through. But if he could raise the pace now, keep his chin down nice and tight, obviously, and raise the pace and take the play away from Barrett, he could have been a long way to, to winning the title. He's still sticking to this one pace single punch routine, which, as I say, he's been getting away with, but I think the time now is for him to raise it. Well, he's a busy champion, but he hasn't really been busy enough in the ring, has Pat Barrett so far. So both boxes. This was good. This was good stuff. With Harkin getting most of it. Yeah, well, uh, Harkin. Time to raise the pace now, but he's going to have to do that. Yeah, I could think I heard that uh, Harkin's corner man, particularly uh, Tony McCrory, was saying the title's there for you. Go and take it. Harkin, the first real blow of this tenth round. Well out of range with the left and right that he threw. Laying on. Oh, he got in the left of the body. See, I think Barra has maybe got a little bit too used to knocking people out with one shot. And uh, all through tonight's performance, he, he seems to have been looking for the single shot to, to knock Harkin out. But Harkin has a good chin, a good, good, determined little fighter he is. And I feel bad his tactics have been wrong all the way through. Harkin longer in the game, of course, as a pro than Barrett. Older by five years. Harkins started when he was 21 in 1984. Not as many fights as Barrett, and Barrett has been incredibly busy. 23 fights in 28 months is uh, Pat Barrett's record. And he has bowled a few men over. But he hasn't landed a punch so far that has really shaken him. Robert Harkin. Harkin just beginning to look a little bit sluggish in this round. He, he, he just doesn't have that little bit of snap to get him out of harm's way in time. He's taking punches here that uh, were missing earlier on in the fight. He's just looking a little bit slowed down now. I think maybe the, uh, the pace getting to him, although it's not been a hot pace, just a few signs that Harkin is maybe tiring a little bit here. There's certainly blood flowing from his nose, which... Uh, will bother his breathing a bit particularly when you want to take in great gulps of air now again Harkin shooting back as we come right down to the bell here at the end of 10 Barrett I think was more or less in charge of that round and the bloody nose of Robert Harkin pays testimony to the punches that came flowing in from the champion. Yeah, well, Harkin uh, seemed to lose a little bit of his sharpness in that round. The uh, punches, that, as I said, were missing earlier on, were getting home. Now, that was a good left uh, at the start of the round, but it uh, took a counter in return. But Harkin slowed down a little bit in that round. 
Well, it's time that the uh, black flash got into the uh, cleanup area. Put them slots together, the hands up right in and out. Move up a couple Two rounds left. Please, come Please. on. Come on. come on. come on now, you save yourself. Get up off your ass. Flatten this guy, on you go. Second out, round 11. Well, certainly, Barrett's corner men were demanding more from him as they sent him in to start this 11th. Harkin's face cleaned up in his corner. How have you got it scored now, uh, Jim? Well, I still feel Harkin is slightly in front because of the, so many negative rounds from the champion in, in the first half of the fight. See, he's never taken charge for long enough. He's had a couple of good bursts uh, in a few of the rounds, but he's never taken charge. A lot of his work has been out of range. As I said earlier, he seems to have lacked that commitment, and he's allowed Harkin to steal quite a few of the rounds. Now, the previous round, I thought, was the champion's best because he really made an impression on Harkin. But I would say he would really need this round and the next one if he hopes for a points victory. Even if Harkin shares these rounds, it wouldn't surprise me if he goes home with Barrett's title. Well, if it goes the distance, I would think that Scotsman Robert Harkin will fancy that his hand will be held up. He's had only four defeats in 18 fights, and he's never, ever been beaten on points. Oh, there was a, there was a head up then, and referee John Coyle. That's a final warning. One more, and I'll throw you out. Those were good punches from the champion. See, all the way through, we have had the feeling that Barrett is capable of far better work, but he just hasn't seemed to want to do it enough. But they just, in little bursts, as we saw just then, he really has the class and the quality. I don't know why he doesn't raise the pace and let these punches flow. He still has plenty of strength left in his legs and in his arms. He's not flagging in the slightest. He should really finish with two real hot rounds. Yes, it's been constant, a little 10 and 15 second bursts. There it is again. And Hardy waiting for Barrett to lead, Barrett waiting for Hardy to lead. And referee John Paul might go in there again a moment and say, Let's have some punching. Oh, that was the inside of the glove. Not the knuckle part. Coming down to the bell again at the end of a round which Barrett has failed to impress his championship qualities on. So... Very much looks as though it's going all the way. Yeah, well, as we come into the, the later stages here, it's just a little bit untidy, and that, that was a little bit blatant uh, headbutt from the challenger. Uh, not typical. his gloves the challenger Robert Harkin 12 rounds is what this fight was scheduled for and it looks as though 12 rounds is what we're gonna get both boxers of course in new territory here neither of them have ever been this far before
And this the time now that Pat Barrett has really got to put on a grandstand finish. Harkin has pursued a single-minded course through this contest and has been very effective with it. His corner said, go out and have a go in this round. You've got nothing to lose. And I wonder if Harkin has got both the strength and the punch to do it. Well, that was a solid trade of punches. Both men felt the power. See, whenever Barrett decides to go to work, it does look so much uh, classier than Harkin. But uh, he really has left us very close tonight because he hasn't been prepared to set a pace and maintain it. I wouldn't be surprised if the fight actually hinged on this last round because uh, Harkin stole quite a few rounds in the early stages when Barrett was very negative and he was allowed all the way through to dictate the pace. Had a little bit of, of untidiness with the head, but yeah, I don't really think that was intentional. But, but all the way through, Barrett has allowed Harkin to, to control the pace and uh, box to, to his own tactics, which is a stupid thing for Barrett to do. And it really has made this a very close championship fight. Well, I think it certainly has surprised a lot of his own supporters. They expected him to have done the business by now. The, the, we've had some rumours coming back from Barrett's corner that they reckon he's had trouble with a jaw all the way through. They're talking about broken jaw. But that I don't think because uh, we would see uh, him wincing with pain every now and again. But that's just a story that's come back uh, from his corner. I don't know maybe if uh, someone's inventing excuses early for this bad performance. I don't know. Well, we had the uh, slightly lame excuse of Najee Daho quite recently. <laughs> well, uh, Barrett took a, a little short left, bang on the chin there, and there wasn't any signs of dismay, so I do not think that there's anything seriously wrong with his jaw. I think it's desire that's been lacking tonight. Now he looks as though it's all going to be down to referee John Coyle. Who does he go to? The champion has retained his title. There is some booing, but Pat Barrett gets the nod from referee John Coyle. He made hard work of it, did Pat Barrett. He may have some leg trouble, and the crowd are now rising to Robert Harkin. A tremendous performance by him. For the first time in his life, he's lost a fight on points. And he came so very, very close to winning this one. He's not going to take the Lonsdale belt away. That's going to stay with Pat Barrett, who is still British light welterweight champion. Well, Pat, I have to first of all say, much as I respect referee John Coyle, I did not agree with the fact you won by two points. Well, I'm not a judge, and uh, I'm just happy I won the title today. That's all I can say. My first defense of the title. And I shall promise that the second defense will be a lot better. But... Well, it needs to be because uh, you've got a lot of ambitions and that wasn't a good defence tonight. No, you didn't wasn't. get all your I'll tactics wrong. Yeah. Um, I heard about Robert Arkin's strong aggression and I tried to make him make the mistake, which was a foolish thing, really, because after the found out about the sixth round, I realised that the punches he threw, that couldn't have no effect. And I don't know why I just didn't take the chance to move in there, but there's one thing I did do, what I promised. I, took, I stuck to it and I said you was going to see a lot of skill tonight and that's something I did show. Yeah, but you didn't get your tactics right, did you? I mean, no, you only fought in verse tonight. Right. I'll have to admit, I didn't get my tactics right. Why but not? It's summit for me. I'm glad anyway, you know. Why didn't you get them right, Pat? No particular reason. It weren't a, a game plan or nothing. But there's one thing I did do tonight. I can prove that as well as punch, I can box. That seemed to be a big decision in terms of points. I thought it was much closer than that. I thought it was close myself, yeah. But I just didn't pressurise him enough. But maybe if uh, my manager told me I'll get a rematch, it would be a different fight next time. You seem to box at one pace. Uh, you seem uh, to have the tactics right, but only one pace. Like the, like, I'd never been a 12-rounder before, you know, and I was trying to, that was in my head. But the next time I know what a 12-rounder is, I know the power of Barrett. And uh, next time, I, I won the fight the next time, if he's man enough to give me a rematch. Were well, you disappointed with Barrett? I visualised him a lot better. He's not as powerful as he's... 
He's a good boxer, good left hand fighter, but uh, he's not really powerful. But the next time will be a different story. You see, Tommy will get a rematch or a turn. Well, let's bring in Tommy Gilmore. Do you think you'll get a rematch or do you think Barrett will want to avoid uh, no, your boxing next time? Ali, Ali Morrison. Fight night will have it in three weeks' time. We're going to make the return. So the rematch three for the weeks, British title in three weeks', three weeks time. time in Glasgow. So Pat Barrett retains his title, but it wasn't a vintage performance by his standards. And a lot of people thought that the referee, John Coyle, one of the very best in the business, was rather flattering there by giving a two-point margin. That's the equivalent of four rounds. Well, as you heard there, the promoters want to get it on again in the next fight night, which comes to you from Glasgow on Tuesday, November the 21st.